The Walking Dead show and The Walking Dead comic have both concluded, and I always find myself comparing the two, especially when it comes to the characters that exist in both mediums. So I thought it'd be fun to do a series on this channel where I actually take characters that exist in both and pin them up against each other and compare them to decide which one I actually definitively prefer. And I think it's pretty damn appropriate to start the series off with Rick Grimes. I mean, he is the main character of both mediums, at least for most of the show anyway. Me? Me? You, <laughs> you, you mean me? Now we're going to be looking at five different categories when comparing these characters. The character introduction, the characteristics of the character, the weapons of the character, the character's ending, and the overall character arc. How many fucking times did I just say character? Whenever I prefer one of these aspects of a character, they will get a point. Whoever has the most points at the end will win. Now unless you're mentally challenged, that should be pretty damn straightforward. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Now when we're just looking at basic story elements, both versions are pretty much one for one. Both versions of Rick get shot in a gunfight and end up in a coma. When they awaken from the coma, to their surprise, the world has been taken over by dead people. Both immediately rush home to find out that their family has abandoned their house and left. Both get in the head with a shovel by Morgan's son, Dwayne, and Morgan updates them on pretty much what's been going on for the past couple weeks. And Rick decides, fuck it, I'm not just gonna sit around here, I'm gonna go look for my family and figure out where the hell they went. And both do a really good job of making you care about Rick as well. You don't envy the situation he's in. It's not like Rick's like a douchebag or anything. Like when he meets Morgan, he's like very thankful to him. And he's just a really nice guy. So immediately you're rooting for him. You want him to find his family. You want there to be a happy ending for Rick. Where the versions differ is the TV show version actually is able to flesh more stuff out. And there's just an advantage of being a TV show or like a movie or something. Like when you're writing a comic book, you don't have time to flesh certain things out for dramatic appeal. When you're writing a comic book, you want to make sure you have as much story packed in as possible. And you only want to include stuff that will hook the reader. Like for example, the comic book opens up with a gunfight. It literally just opens up to Rick getting shot and immediately bam, he's in the zombie apocalypse. In the show, you actually get to see what happens before the gunfight and the build up to it as well. And it's able to flesh Rick out more than the comic did. Not only do you get to see what happens before the gunfight, you actually get to see his relationship with Shane. You actually get to see that, hey, he's actually having problems at home with his wife. And honestly, that's really what you want to do when you're adapting a comic book or a book. You want to flesh things out that maybe didn't have time to be fleshed out in the comic book, but still honor the source material. And that's one of the reasons I'm actually going to give the point to the TV show version. Look, I'm of the opinion that The Walking Dead pilot, the first episode, is some of the best television ever. I honestly think it's the best pilot of TV show history. Not only that, I think it's the best adaptation of a comic book ever. It's my favorite anyway. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend The Walking Dead show as a whole because in my opinion, especially towards the later seasons, the show kind of becomes ass. But I highly, I highly recommend to at least check out the first season, if not the first episode of The Walking Dead, just to get a sense on how great the show could have been and the potential that it actually had. The first episode is absolutely phenomenal, and although The Walking Dead comic does get points for being the first one to do it, and of course the show wouldn't have been able to exist without the comic book, the fact that they were able to remain so faithful to the source material but add things to make it better is just how you want to do adaptations like this. I love it, man. The points go into the TV show version. Now again, when it comes to characteristics, both are relatively similar, but when you actually get into the nitty gritty, there are some very major differences between the two. Like I mentioned earlier when he was interacting with Morgan, both are actually just genuinely nice, cool people. When they're not in complete survival mode anyway. But I'd say this is way more apparent in the comic books. Whenever they run into a new group or meet more people or when they get a new addition to the group, usually like eight times out of ten, they immediately hit it off with Rick. There was a lot more instances in the comic books of Rick being a cool, laid-back guy than there is in the TV show. Now, the next two things I'm going to talk about is when we're actually going to get into real major differences between the two. If you know nothing about the comic books, this might come to a major shock to you. Most people that I've talked to who have only seen the TV show have no idea that this happens in the comic books. Yeah, Rick loses his right hand. And just to specify, that is 100% his dominant hand. And this isn't something that happens like later on in the comic books. No, it happens relatively early into the comic book series. I think it happens around like issue 28, 29 around there. And the comic book series goes until issue 193. That means for most of the comic book series, Rick doesn't have a hand. That's insanity to a lot of people. And to be honest with you, I very much prefer this characteristic over the TV show version. After Rick loses his hand, he has to relearn how to shoot and relearn how to do a lot of things. Whenever he has an encounter with a zombie or another hostile survivor, it actually feels like Rick could die in that moment. 
because he doesn't have a right hand. That is a huge handicap in a survival world like this. He even low-key kind of becomes a dirty fighter, which I kind of think is humorous, but badass at the same time. In the TV show, I never once actually felt like Rick was in danger because he's a badass, capable survivor. He doesn't really need backup in a lot of situations. And that's what I like about the comic book version. Rick is reliant on his friends and his family to help him survive. I like the fact that his main survival skill turns into him being a good leader. The fact that he's able to effectively keep people alive and keep people together is what keeps him alive. And I think that's fucking awesome. Now, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that the main reason they never actually did this in the TV show was budgetary reasons. Apparently, they couldn't afford to CGI Rick's hand out every single scene that he was in. However, and there's going to be spoilers here for The Ones Who Live, the new Walking Dead TV show that's coming out. So if you don't want spoilers, just, just click out of this damn video, okay? The new trailer came out for the show and Rick's definitely missing a hand in the trailer. Granted, it's the wrong hand, it's not his dominant hand, but whatever, whatever. So it does seem like he is eventually going to lose his hand, but to me, that's too late. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool that Rick is missing his hand during major events like the prison fight and All Out War. However, that is not the biggest difference between the two. TV show Rick is kind of evil at times. Now, sometimes the comic book version walks that line, don't get me wrong, he definitely does, but he never does anything inherently evil. Let's look at two events that happen in both the comic book and the TV show. When Rick and his group kill the hunters. Now, both versions track the hunters down and they slaughter them, like brutally murder them. And the thing is, is they kind of had to, because they're cannibals, you know what I mean? Like, that's how they live. If they didn't kill them now, they would have found another group to kill and hurt. But the way they killed them, they both may have gone a little bit too far. Now, how the versions are different is how both react to what they did. TV show Rick shows no remorse. He does not give a fuck. He does not care that they murdered them brutally. He doesn't care that they may have gone too far. He doesn't even acknowledge it. He almost seems proud of what they did. Comic book Rick, on the other hand, no pun intended, actually shows genuine remorse. He regrets what he did. He acknowledges, sure, they needed to kill them 100%, but they could have done it differently, and that actually affects him. Like, he regrets it. Like, he hates what he did. When Rick in the show was fighting a group of saviors, he straight up lies to them and gets them into a false sense of security. He promises them that he's not going to kill them if they work together to kill these zombies. Too weak to take on this herd alone. Cut us loose. Give us all weapons. We can help you. He slaughters them. And then when the guy's dying on the floor and he's like, oh, but you promised, Rick cold heartedly says, I lied. You just said. You just said. I lied. That is just straight up evil, dude. There is never a point in the comic books where Rick is genuinely straight up evil. And I like that. I like the fact that in this fucked up world where all these evil people are walking around and dead people are walking around, I like the fact that the main character is a good guy, that we're actually following a hero. I know that might sound a little corny, but it's just, it's weirdly enough, it's refreshing in a world like The Walking Dead. So yeah, needless to say, this point is going to the comic book version. <laughs> Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. Rick in the show has some of the most iconic weapons in pop culture, man. His python alone is badass as fuck. It's a little impractical, but badass nonetheless. And let's not forget the machete with the red handle, man. It's so iconic that it even got its own webisode. It was pretty bad. Don't watch it, but it exists. And of course, his iconic hatchet. What do you have? A knife? He had a hatchet. A uh, hatchet? Now, surely because TV show Rick has all of these iconic weapons, comic book Rick must have iconic weapons of his own, right? Right? No, he doesn't. Yeah, comic book Rick doesn't have any iconic weapons whatsoever. He uses the same Glock pretty much throughout the entire series. The closest thing I can think of to an iconic weapon is the cane that he uses after Negan breaks his leg, but he even stops using that eventually. This is for sure an easy point for the TV show version. Hi, I'm Andrew Lincoln, aka Ricky Dicky Doodah Grimes. Rick's ending in the comic books is extremely strong and impactful 
and emotional. I fucking love it. I want to mostly paraphrase here, but essentially Rick and his group come across a very large community called the Commonwealth. And it's really special. Like Rick starts to hold the place dear to his heart because this is what he's been fighting for, right? A place like this where thousands of people come together and survive and can almost get back to the way things used to be. And the problem was there was a fuck ton of corruption there. And because of all that corruption, there was going to be an all out civil war, man. Like people were about to fucking revolt against the leader, Pamela and her son. And a lot of people were going to die. And Rick essentially was able to prevent that. He was essentially able to bring everybody together. He was like, look, look what we have here in this fucked up world. We were able to achieve something impossible and we're really going to destroy that over something as petty as this. He's kind of like explaining we don't need to live as savages anymore. What we have here is special and we need to do everything in our power to keep it from crumbling. Doing that essentially paved the way for a brighter future, right? For a more peaceful and brighter future for the Commonwealth. Now, unfortunately, a lot of visions like this don't come to fruition unless you become a martyr and that's essentially what happened to rick pamela's son sebastian didn't like this at all bro like he was pissed he snuck into rick's room and shot him in the chest and he died and i think it's really cool that the way he leaves the apocalypse is the same way he was introduced into the apocalypse and it's tragic for sure i was really sad when this happened but the bittersweet part is his vision, what he wanted for the world, what he wanted for the Commonwealth, does come to fruition. His death was extremely tragic, but it felt like it mattered. His death had the biggest impact on the series by far. The TV show version is stupid. No! Andrew Lincoln didn't want to be in the show anymore, and he kind of left prematurely. I think he initially asked to be killed off, but the showrunners weren't willing to do that because they felt like they had more story with Rick, of course, because he's the main character of the goddamn series. The comic book literally ends with his death. So they're like, look, we won't kill you off, but how about you come back for a fucking spinoff show down the line and we continue your story there? They tried to fit it into the story, but it just never worked for me. It felt very premature because especially as a comic book fan, it was like, there's Rick's so important to the story. Why? It just sucks that he had to be written off. And honestly, I don't blame Andrew Lincoln for wanting to leave. He claimed that it's because he wanted to spend more time with his family, but I like to think it's because the writing got so fucking bad that he just didn't want to be a part of a show like this anymore. That's just my theory anyway. I have no proof if that's the real reason, but like, I, I'm... I like to think so. Rick in the show blows up a bridge that him and his group have been working on for months for trade route purposes to prevent a horde of zombies from reaching Alexandria and the other communities. And after that, he's presumed dead, but he's actually taken off to his spinoff show after that. So the entire, for like all intents and purposes, everybody in the show, the main characters, all of them think that Rick Grimes is dead. But the thing is, his supposed quote unquote death didn't even matter. He didn't even become a martyr. The vision that he had with having these trade routes and all that never came to fruition. After he died, everybody just fucked off. All the communities just separated and didn't give a fuck about Rick's sacrifice. I think that's the part that bothered me the most. Not the fact that Rick left the show prematurely. He left his own story prematurely, but because his death didn't feel like it mattered whatsoever. And that's, that hurts. It really hurts, man. This is an easy point for the fucking comic book version. So look, this isn't a character analysis. I'm not gonna try to look for any hidden meanings in Rick's story or anything like that. I'm just gonna paraphrase each story arc and I'm gonna tell you which one I prefer. And straight up, it's the comic book version. Mainly because rereading it, it feels like there was just one clear vision for what Rick's story was supposed to be. Like, for example, like extremely early on in the series, Rick declares him and his group as the Walking Dead. He says he is the Walking Dead. Sometimes we have to become savages and we have to let our humanity go in order to survive. That pretty much remains consistent throughout the entire series up until his last issue, where he finds the Commonwealth and he sees these people, he sees that all these people have come together and he thinks... We don't have to be the walking dead anymore. We are not the walking dead. Saying we are not the walking dead is an extremely powerful moment in the comic books because it shows that Rick Grimes is finally willing to let that part of himself go. It feels like there was just one clear vision for Rick and 
I like that. It feels very nice rereading the comic books. And that's kind of the problem I have with the TV show version. It didn't ever feel like they had a clear vision for Rick Grimes, which I'm not going to fault the writers for this, right? Because they started the show when the comic book series was still going on. The comic book series hadn't concluded yet when the show started. They didn't know where Rick's story was going, so they kind of took some creative liberties because they didn't really understand where Rick's story was going to end up. Having certain story elements like Rick saying we are the walking dead extremely early on in the story, instead of him saying it like in the middle of like season five, kind of takes away from that point. Now I know his story technically hasn't ended yet because the spinoff is coming out, but when I'm doing this series, I'll be honest, I'm only going to look at the main show. And the show just didn't hit the mark. His entire story just kind of feels like a damn mess. Like they didn't really know what to do with Rick. They wanted to adapt comic book moments for sure, but they didn't really understand what they meant because they didn't have the full story. So because of the comic book version having a very good cohesive story and the TV show version feeling like a fucking mess, I am going to give this point to the comic book version, which means the comic book version does win. Look, I hate on the TV show quite often. I think after season five, the TV show goes way downhill. It becomes an absolute dumpster fire. However, one of the things that was always consistently good that I did enjoy watching was Rick Grimes. Andrew Lincoln's performance is amazing. I'm not saying it's not. I'm, I'm not trying to take away anything from that version of Rick Grimes. Honestly, still to this day, he's my favorite character in the show. Even though I suffered through season seven and eight, which were by far the worst seasons of the show, I still always liked seeing Rick Grimes on screen. That was always a highlight of every episode. To the point where even though I wasn't interested in the show anymore and I was just kind of watching it out of habit and out of obligation to watch it because it was my favorite comic book series, I was still genuinely upset to see Rick Grimes go. Like that's 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 my favorite character. That's the main character, man. Like I I was upset even though I wasn't really into the show anymore. That was quite honestly the last time I actually felt something real while watching the show, honestly. So even though the comic book version did win, I will say that the TV show version, Andrew Lincoln's performance of Rick Grimes, will always have a special place in my heart. Because I got into the comic book series through the TV show. It was Andrew Lincoln's performance and my liking for the character of Rick Grimes that made me want to read the comic books. So even though I do prefer the comic book version of Rick Grimes by a lot, I still think the TV show version is still a great character in his own right. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more because next week I will be looking at Michonne. All my social media is linked in the description. If you have any suggestions on which character you want me to look at, go ahead and leave it in the comments and let me know which version of Rick Grimes you prefer. I'll see you guys in the next one. Once again, thank you all for watching. I'm super bad at outros. Why the fuck are you still here? Leave. The video's over. Fucking leave. Car or